Hey APO students, let's study how to go about reading a historical document. If you can master this skill, then you'll do quite well with your stimulus-based questions and potentially a document-based question as well. Let's get to it. I'm not going to read you this quote, but I think it's a good one. And so it'd be a good idea to go and pause the video, maybe skim through the quote yourself. But let me give you some tips and some tricks on how to do quite well with analyzing a primary source. Always begin with the date first. What is going on at the time? What is the context of the quote? I think this is a little over 50 years after Christopher Columbus supposedly found America. So can they give you some clues as to what this quote will potentially be about? Next, look at the author. Where are they from? Who is the writer? Are they male, female? Can you tell anything about their job, occupation? Can you tell where they're from? What do we know about this person's opinion? And do you think that this is a biased source? Finally, what is the key word in the title of this document? What does the title of the essay suggest that this quote will potentially be about? Now, for me personally, I, I like to annotate quotes. I like to underline words that I think are important and significant. I like to underline words that I might not be familiar with as well. So as you read these primary documents, they're very old and usually they use language that is a little bit outdated that you wouldn't hear in modern times. But ask yourself questions as you're reading these documents. Who created this situation? Who appears to be the bad guy, the Spanish or the Indians, according to this section? What is Kasva? What can you infer this word means if you aren't familiar with it? Oftentimes, if you see a word like Kasva or potentially league, what I like to think about doing is leaving that word blank and then rereading the sentence and then seeing if I can find another word to substitute into that into that into that blank area. And that usually helps me figure out a word that I may not be familiar with. So as we finish out, what does this imply about the Spanish? This phrase. And then finally, the last two words of the quote, what does it also imply about the Spanish as well? So while we're at it, why don't we take a look at an example of a stimulus-based multiple choice question. Here you are given a document, and I want to show you four steps to do really well with them. So we're going to skip around just a little bit. So here you have a document. Always start with the date. What is happening during that time period? It's 1848. Step number two, look for the title of the document and the author. What clues can you pick up on about the document that might help you answer the question? So we know it's called the Declaration of Sentiments and Resolutions and then the Seneca Falls Convention. So hopefully you've already got a little bit of background. You can go ahead and start predicting as to what this document may be about. We'll scroll all the way down to the very bottom right here. Personally, I like to annotate my um, stimulus questions. I like to be able to go and mark them up, underline words that I think are important. So you can see a history of repeated injuries, usurpations. Think about what is that word? Is it a good or a bad connotation to it? If you're not sure about that word, maybe, maybe draw a line through it or leave it blank and then try and come back again and, and, and see if it makes sense if you're, when you reread the sentence itself. On the part of man towards woman. You can see where I've gone in. I've underlined he, 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 what does that remind you of? Hopefully it should remind you a little bit of the Declaration of Independence. But you can see some of the other things that I've also annotated as well. For example, franchise, franchise. That might be a word that you're not familiar with. So think, what is the word? Does elective give it away? If you were to leave it blank and then come back and reread it again, do you think you could figure out what it meant? So always look for the root word to see if the word is, uh, has a positive or a negative connotation to it as well. And so I'm going to scroll back up here and look at the actual stimulus questions itself. So I'm going to jump from here, from one down to one over there as well. So the ideas expressed in the excerpt most directly challenged prevailing ideal in the 19th, early 19th century that you can see right down in here with number one, the ideas expressed in the excerpt. I'm going to underline most directly challenged the prevailing ideal. And I'm also going to underline early 19th century. I also like to annotate the questions when I'm reading these on the test. And the answer is going to be B, women should focus on the home and domestic sphere. Why is it? This is the only one of the four options that is being challenged by the Declaration of Sentiments. Number two, I'm also going to underline the word second half of the 19th century, and I'm also going to underline best represented a continuation of the ideas expressed in the Declaration. 
what are you noticing about some of these things? You see how it says in number one, in the excerpt, and then this one, and also number two, it also says in the declaration. What it's asking you to do is to stay within the box of that stimulus question. A lot of times students like to cloud this information with words and, and information that they know that's outside of the box. It's great to know a lot of history, but you got to make sure that you're doing what the question's asking. So always when you get these multiple choice questions, think about staying within that box and I think you'll be in, in good shape. So number two, the answer is going to be A, the formation of voluntary organizations and reform efforts. Emphasize, emphasis on organization, which makes it a bigger movement than the social gospel movement that we studied in class. And then we'll look at number three as well. I underline supporters of the declaration and then broke ranks. And if you don't know that, what is this phrase? It sounds like a military term. With which of the following groups by the 1870s? So now you got to know a little bit more, but still it's much, it's very much related to the stimulus question there to jog your memory. So the answer is going to be C for this one, supporters of the 15th Amendment. For example, supporters of the Declaration would not like the 15th Amendment since it allowed African-American men to vote, yet said nothing about women being able to vote. So one of the last things I want to I mention for this is going back to the point of staying within the stimulus question itself. So you're given that box. Please focus on that because it's very easy to bring in outside of information from many other topics that you know. And, and that's a great thing to know love history, but sometimes um, it's not related to the actual stimulus question itself. All right, I hope this was very helpful. Thanks for watching.